for their Sunday school teacher? Children or child? <laughs> um, but you know, as we were worshiping, in all seriousness, what I, when I opened my eyes, as I saw, I felt the Spirit stirring in the air. What I saw was arrows, literally arrows, going into specific people in this room. Like right from the heart of God, just, a, just an arrow, a golden arrow being shot. And I felt like God was just ministering to specific people, hitting them right where they need to be hit with his just love right now. So, Father, we give you glory for that. And just receive that if that is you. I'm not going to mention who I saw, but you know who you are because you felt it. So give God the glory. But right now, would you stand with me one more time and let's give God glory for his word this time. If you have your Bibles, if you would just raise them as we honor him. Father, we thank you for your word that is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Thank you that all scriptures God breathed and inspired, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in your righteousness. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So today, we're going to conclude this uh, three-part series, My First, My Last, My Best. And the question we've been asking throughout the series, because a lot of people, when they ask, you know, why does God want me to do this? Why do I need to give God this? God does not need anything from us, okay? We ask the question, why does God want me to give my first, my first fruits, my first tithes, my first offerings? My, my, the first of my day, the first of my year, the first of my week. Well, the question isn't why does he need it, but why is it important that I give my first? And then a couple of weeks ago, we, we tried to answer the question, why is it important that I give my last? Because it's not about what it does for him. It's what about what he wants to do through us. So today... We're going to talk about my best. So we're going to ask the same question. Not, why does God want my best? If he can do anything he wants to do, why does he want my best? The question is, why is it important for me to give him my very best? I want to begin with Hebrews 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost, those who came to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. So I'm giving you now 90% of the punchline of this message, and then we're going to retract and go back. Talking about Jesus. Listen to the words that are used by the writer of Hebrews here. If this isn't Jesus, not just he gave his best at the Calvary, and he gave his best when he said, I am going to give you my spirit, but see what he is doing right now in what he's giving us. Therefore, he also is able to save. Okay, he's still saving people. To the uttermost. What the heck does that mean? To the uttermost. Unfortunately, a lot of us are still stuck at the cross with Jesus. When we say, well, he just wants to save me so I can go to heaven and that's it. But that's not what the uttermost means. That's partly most. The uttermost is everything. When Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand, means right now, he's here. Anything, he told his disciples, anything I've done, you're going to be able to do and more right here. So to the uttermost is a reference that not only am I living with Christ in my heart, but I'm living with the spirit inside me that can move mountains, spirit that can heal, that, that can just touch people in deeper ways, in all the gifts of the Spirit, plus, just like even though Jesus knew he was walking to the cross, he knew 
he was walking, flying out of that cross. Okay? That's the uttermost. Just like we know some days are going to be harder than other days, and we have difficulties, we know in his spirit we walk in his victory. So we will fly out of that trial in his strength. That's the uttermost. There are too many defeated Christians walking around. Jesus gave us his best, so we don't walk around defeated. Yes, we walk around sometimes with heavy burdens, but you know what? In him, the burden gets lighter. That's the uttermost he's talking about. You're not walking around, okay, I'm going to heaven, but I got to live this life of crap. And no, you walk with your joy. You find his strength to overcome because it's in him we overcome. And that's a whole other message, but I need you to get to get what I'm saying, and I hope you do here. Because he gets, saves to the uttermost who come to God. That's us. That's what he's still doing today. And listen to this. He always lives to make intercession. In other words, what he's even doing now, he's interceding for us in salvation and empowering us in his spirit. He lives. This is his purpose. Now, if this is not Jesus giving us his best, I don't know what best looks like. Okay? So let's begin with our examples who we are told to be imitators of, right? He's given us his best. And who's he given his best for? Me and you. Why would he do that? Because we, we're not perfect, but what does he say? While we were yet sinners, in other words, ugly, dark, miserable, nasty, not walking with God, unrighteous, unholy, etc. While we were yet certain sinners, he still loved us. While I was still making a mess of my own life, trying to fix my own problems, living my own way, he still loved me. And he, and he did and is doing what he can to woo me, me back to him, to his heart. Bring me closer to him. He's always given us his best. He's doing his part when we are willing to do our part. That's a contingency. Those who come to him. And I'm, as I share this with you, I'm believing each one of you, each one of us, is striving. And I pray if you haven't, Lord, I just right now, Holy Spirit, bring a spirit of conviction and love that's going to encourage us to strive to do our part, Holy Spirit, right now. Just release that in your name. And look at this extent. So, Let's, I'm going to ask two qu a question. Why is it hard for us to give our best? Or why sometimes do we choose not to give our best? Well, I'm gonna, this is the uh, warning here. This is probably going to be the most gut-wrenching part of the message. Okay? There's two reasons why. And the first is, sometimes we don't feel what we have is good enough. Many of us are emotionally wounded, mentally wounded, or just look at ourselves and say, what do I have to give? So much, you know, uh, someone else has so much more. What do I have to offer? Why, why bother trying? Because I, I just don't have enough. You know, most of us don't feel like we have anything worthwhile to give. That's why we don't give our best. We don't think it's good enough. Um, we don't think we're worthy because it's not what we have. Because see, it's not about what we have. It's who we are. Okay? But our minds twist it around. We think of what we have or what we can do versus who we are. God loves me. Jesus died for me. Holy Spirit is in me because of who I am as a son or daughter of God not but what I do. When I choose those 
who come to God, when I choose to come to God and open this up and open this up to Him, to receive Him to the uttermost, I am loved not because of my ability, but because I am a son or daughter of God. He will love me for that reason and that reason alone and does love me for that reason alone. Now he can, wants to do so much more through me as I learn the family business. But a lot of us struggle with that. We perceive that what we have is so small that it can't accomplish anything. So that becomes an issue for us. But here's the other reason why sometimes we don't give our best. And this is where it's going to be a little tough for some of us to hear. We have to ask... We ask ourselves sometimes, is it worth it to give my best? Is it worth it to give my best? Is it worth it to invest my time, my effort, my money, my emotions to give the best? I can guarantee you every single one of us in this room at one point or another went to work on a given day going, you know what, it's just not worth it. The way they treat me, the way they make me feel, why should I give my best? Why should I do everything I can do with the very best of my ability? Why should I pour out so much when they don't appreciate me? What if God were to say, (laughs) why should I pour out so much when they keep rejecting me? I say, why should I give my wife or husband my very best when it seems like, in my mind, it seems like nothing I do works? Why should I give my church my money, give them my best, when they don't do things my way? I mean, most of us have, like, heard televangelists or been to places where they're taking offerings and you're going... I don't jive with this. This is not connecting with me. Or I don't agree with this. And so we don't sow into it. I mean, I'm just being honest and real right now. But when you believe in something, you sow into it, right? You pour into it. God believed in us that he sent his only begotten son. He poured himself into us. Even while we were yet sinners, when we didn't deserve it, when we didn't appreciate Him. So keep these things in mind as we go through this. That if we're going to think something is not worth giving our best, who are we giving it to? Who are we doing it for? Them? Or are we doing it to honor God? Because He says, in all things, do all things as if you're doing it unto Him. That's His word. So whose appreciation are we looking for? The world's? The pat on the back from our boss or co-workers? Or son, daughter, well done. You did a great job today. I know you didn't feel like it. I know you were hurt. You were scarred. I know you weren't into it, but you gave it your best. You gave it your best, and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And some days your best might look better than other days. But that day you gave me what you had. You gave me your best. And I'm proud of you. Because that's the challenge we have. That's the thing that keeps us from giving our best. You know, if we believe in this ministry, every one of us that believes in this ministry should be doing everything they can, obviously in prayer, and as the Lord is leading them, to give their best to this ministry. If you believe in your relationship with your wife or husband, you should be giving your best to sow into your marriage so that it would look like what God wants it to look like. Not because you're trying to please them, but because you're honoring your dad. Okay? It's not about this. It's about this. Even if you don't like your coworkers, the fact that the knowledge that God has you where he wants you to be 
And this is the job description and the expectations. We give our best to honor him for placing us where he has us, even though this may not be the way we want it to be. We give him our best. But I want to look at scripture, verse 40. You know this story, and I want to look at a, couple, a few points here real quick as we talk about giving our best. This is the story of David when he confronts Goliath. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, in a pouch which he had, and his sling which was in his hand. He drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David. And the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy, and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give you I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come with me with sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, by the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give you the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the air, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. I want you to keep note. It wasn't, I will give your carcass to the birds of the air. I will give the carcass of the, your army. Keep that in mind. That's not something we think about a lot of times. We just imagine that Sunday school lesson with David and Goliath. We don't think about that. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So it was when the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead. So the stone sank in the forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, stood over the Philistine, took the sword, drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. Then the Philistines saw that their champion was dead. They fled and you know the rest of the story. Israel's armies ran after them and slaughtered them. We'll look at a couple of points here. See, giving our best, why, we, why it's important for me to give my best, teaches me how to trust God with the little things as well as with the big things. Giving my best teaches me to trust God with the little things as well as the big things. See, it's easy to have something great and say, I'm giving my best because I have this great thing. I have this great talent. You know, I've been playing guitar for 50 years and, you know, I'm on the top five guitarists of the world, so I'll give God my very best. It's easy to say that when you have that much ability. But what about saying, Lord, I've only been playing guitar for three months. I only know three chords. But you know what? I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to give them to you. And I share that as a personal testimony because when I first learned guitar, for the first like three or four months of my thing, everything was D-A-G, D-A-G, D-A-G. No matter what the song was. But that was my best to God. You give him your best. See, it's easy to have something great and see something great come out of it, but God wants to reveal himself and his great things, greatness in the little things as well. Because it's not the, the, about the great things I have. 
It's about how great he is. It's what he wants to do with the little things. See, David showed up against this giant. And, and Saul, if you go back before that, his expectations was, here, take my armor, which is probably the best armor of the whole army. David showed up in the clothes he wears when he guards sheep with five small pebbles. They weren't sharp. They were smooth. Everything the giant has had a point to it. They were round. They were smooth. They were insignificant. From a perception point of view, they looked like nothing. That they would have no impact at all. Nothing was going to work. Not something that would be able to kill Goliath. They looked worthless. He was mocked for it. But what happened? God took the little thing and made something great out of it because God was in it. One of our values here and, and part of our vision is disciples making disciples, mentoring each other. I might know only three, four, five chords, but you know what? I can teach those three, four, five chords to somebody else. It may look like little, but you know what? I can pour that, what, whatever it is I have, into somebody else and see something great come out of it. We talked last time about the widow, uh, the woman who only had a couple of coins. She sewed into it that was her very best, not just her last. But those little things matter because, see, we measure best how, by how much, how big, or how great. God measures best by how much, how big, and how great my trust and faith in him to release what I have. Not the size of it, but my willingness to let it go and to give it to him. Second thing, giving my best allows God to do what he wants to do. See, he wanted to reveal himself. David made that declaration, right? That all the world will see the God that leads this Israel army, Israeli army, who he is. He wanted the giant to fall. He wanted to declare his glory to the nations. What would be more impactful? The army of the Israelites defeating the army of the Philistines or, or the greatest warrior of the Israelite army showing up and doing a, this great you know, one-on-one fight and defeating Goliath or some scrawny little runt with sandals on, fresh out of diapers, you know, a few years out of diapers with a sling and a few smooth stones showing up. What's going to... You know, this is the underdog that people talk about for years to come. What's going to have more of an impact on the world that's going to bring glory to God? Because why? We measure our best by what we think our potential should be in accomplishing something, right? We look at what we have and think, well, this is my potential uh, or what, the maximum I can do with what I have. But see, God measures best by being willing to sacrifice and give what I have in that moment. When God uh, sees you, has you in a store, grocery store, and we've heard this testimony from people, and he says, go pray for that person's knee. He's asking for what you have in that moment And that's all he's asking for. He's not asking you to spend six days praying and fasting, then showing up, and then doing this now that you're fully, quote, spiritual and fired up. He's saying, I know what you got. I know what I want to do with what you have right now. Do it. Do it. When God says, you got got $20 in your pocket, I want you to sow into this missionary right now, like, he needs $100,000 for whatever project. What a, do it because God will multiply it. When God says, I want you to sow into this ministry, base your Christian fellowship, or sow your talent. That's not all finances. Sow your talent or your time or just your willingness. 
It's what you have that God wants to work through. It's what you have that day in that moment. His measuring stick looks a whole lot different than mine. That's for sure. See, look at Moses. I'm not going to go into that, but Moses made every excuse to God why he can't be the one to lead people out of Egypt, right? Every excuse. I'm surprised God didn't just like slap him upside his head and go, hello, wake up here. This is me. I'm talking to you from a, from a fiery bush that's not burning. You don't think we can do this? But he says, okay, fine. I'll give you a stick that can turn into a snake. I'll give you Aaron. You want, what, what other excuses, Moses, do you have? But then Moses shows up, and in those moments right there, God does something with what he has. Because Moses, even though prior when he was thinking about it, see, that's our problem. When we start thinking about it, ruminating about these things, our mind goes to places that aren't where God is. We got to get our hearts where God is. Okay? Because the enemy wants to put doubt in our mind. The more we think about it, the more we stir ourselves into doubt unless you enter into that place of worship where you are just worshiping and worshiping and focused and renewing your mind with the word of God. Unless you're doing those things, your mind's going to wander into where God doesn't want it to go. But in those moments, When you trust in him, you give him your best, boom. He'll do something awesome with it. Third point, giving my best allows me to see what God can do. See, God wants to build my faith. We touched on this last week a little bit with Jacob's message. But God is all about partnership. He wants to partner with us. He's inviting us into his kingdom. He wants us to see the inner workings and be taught every trade that is within his kingdom. And we have the greatest teacher in the Holy Spirit. So he wants to partner with us. So God, he wants to build my faith in what he can do so I can see and go, man, that's it. And if I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, that he can do this. That I can do this in him. Apart from him, yeah, I know. But in him, I can. He wants me to see. He wants to take that mustard seed that looks so insignificant and he's got those, watch this tree I'm going to make out of it. See what it is. Because faith builds Faith. Faith builds faith. When I pray for someone, for something, and that prayer is answered, whether it's in a healing or another type of situation or circumstance, whose faith is going to get built? Mine. Yes, there's, they're going to be encouraged, but my faith in what God can do through me is going to be built. And the more I allow him, give him opportunities where I position myself to partner with him and see what he can do, the more I am encouraged, the more he encourages me to want to do more. Success breeds success. Motivation leads to more motivation. And success, which leads to more motivation, which leads to more success. It's this beautiful little thing that, that God has established within us. See, David would not, I mean, think about this. David would not have been able to do what he did as king of Israel. And prior to king, being king of Israel, in his time when he's running away from Saul, if he did not step out with Goliath. Just, just think about that right now. If that foundation of something so immeasurably great by man's standard was in front of you 
and an entire army was afraid to step up. And God did it to a five foot nothing boy. There was a foundation laid in him that was deep within his soul that when Saul was chasing him with his army, he knew, even though he had moments of, of crying out to God because he's human, he stayed steadfast to the purpose of God. And I believe he would not have been able to be king and to lead their armies the way he led their armies if this foundation was not the people. He, he would not have been looked at by the people the same way. He wouldn't have had the reputation of being the man of God he was. But two, if faith builds faith, he wouldn't have that foundation of faith that was established in stepping up against Goliath. See, it's one thing to kill a lion and a bear, and that may not be an e and that's not an easy thing, believe me. Not that I've ever faced a lion or a bear, but, <laughs> you know, but a lion and a bear are not tactically trained. They're not skilled at using weapons and combat and have understanding of hand-to-hand -hand combat. They're just animalistic in instinct. That ability, what God did because he said yes to God, just laid that foundation that I can do just about anything in him. He's with me. If he's with me with Goliath, man, when I'm running from Saul, you're going to be with me. When I'm facing the Philistine army with the Israelite army and leading them as their general, you're going to be with me. When I'm king of Is over Israel, you're going to be with me. The times he failed were the times he stepped apart from where God wanted him to be. But he knew whenever he was in those moments where God wanted him to be, he had a victory in one way or another. He was never ever defeated when he was where God wanted him to be. He never fell only when he was apart from where God. Because scripture says, in the time when kings went to war, he stayed home. And he represented God to the people. He needed to trust God in the little things so that he will know God can be trusted in the bigger things. As well. See, we measure our best by what we think we can accomplish. God measures best by what he knows we can accomplish in partnering with him. Coming together with him. And as I said it towards the beginning, we measure best sometimes by worth, by, by placing a price tag in a way on it. What is this worth to me? To God, every single one of us is worth eternity. Okay? Even where he has us in that moment is worth eternity for what can accomplish. Because you never know where you will be where God says, to do this now. Peter and Paul were just walking down the street and there was a cripple. Were they planning to meet a cripple? Probably not. Were there probably other people who were begging and crippled? Yes, I'm sure there were. Around town and outside of town. But in that moment, there was a reason why that man needed to be healed. Gold and silver we don't have. But we got something for you. God had them there in that moment for a specific reason. It's, a, it's hard and it's a lot of pressure to give our best in all things. But God, in us, we can do this. 
And again, our best from our perspective may be better some days than other days. That's not a way to measure it. The measuring stick is, can I lay my head down at night? And as I meditate and seek his face and say, Lord, I gave you my best today in everything I did. And yeah, well, I gave you my best in these, but I know I could have done better in that. So Lord, forgive me for that and help me to know better next time and give you more, to trust you more, to see what you can do more. It's a matter simply of trust, and that's what God is asking us to do. Whether we give our first, our last, or our best, trust me. Trust me with your finances. Trust me with your marriage when you show up. Even if your spouse isn't treating you the way you feel like this, you should be treated, trust me. Do your part. If your kids aren't treating you the way you feel you should be treated, Trust me, do your part. If your mom and dad aren't treating you the way you feel you, you need, should be treated, trust me, do your part. Your church, trust me, do your part. Your relationships, your workplace, trust me, do your part. Give me what you have. Basically, give me something to work with. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> you all were given out communion cups as we entered this place. We're going to take communion together in a moment, but I want you to put yourself in that receiving position. feel like today needs to be a day where we recommit or rededicate or reconsecrate ourselves to the things of God, of, uh, of what we've been talking about. You know, and I know, where we've fallen short in different areas of our lives or where we want God to do more through. And we want to be a part of that and do our part better. So as Holy Spirit is bringing these revelations to you right now, just uh, cry them out to God. Just lay them there. Repent where, it needs, where repentance needs to be. Maybe for a spirit of pride where you said, they treated me this way or I didn't like this situation so I'm not going to do this. Or I just don't want to do this. But then also, in other areas, you may need to ask, Holy Spirit, I am giving you this right now. And I'm trusting in you in this moving forward. You may have to call it out. I trust you with my finances and in giving. I trust you with my marriage and in pouring out. I trust you in my relationships in pouring out. I trust you in my work in, in giving my best. I trust you with my first, with the things that I get first. Your priorities take precedent over my priorities. And may my priorities line up with your priorities. Just take that moment to just receive and listen and do your business with him right now. Yes, Lord. Mm. 
Lord. There are two layers to your uh, communion package here. The top layer is the bread, but underneath it is the water. So top layer is very thin, so it might be a little more difficult to peel off than the heavier layer. That night, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And when you think about giving his best, his first, his last, he was given it all. He says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Remember how I was, who I was, what I did, how I did it, and how much I have loved you, and how love was the foundation of it all. My love for the Father, my Father, and my love for you. When you do this, when you come together and break bread, do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat. And after dinner, he took the cup and he passed it around. Let him, cup of my covenant, my promise. If you do your part, I promise to do my part. If you come to me, I'm there for you. Abundantly, to the fullest. This is my promise to you. I will never leave you or forsake you. You will sit in my right hand. And every spiritual blessing in the heavenly kingdom in Christ Jesus is available to you in this. He said, every time you come together and do this, do this in remembrance of me. All to Jesus I surrender All to you I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in your presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, oh, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank You for this morning. We thank You for what You are doing in us and through us. And as We are in this last month of 2018. May it be our best month in you, Lord. Giving you our very best in giving you our last of the year. That, Father, our focus are on the things of you, not on anything else. As we gear up to give you our very first in giving you our best in January. That the best is yet ahead of us. Just thank you, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go in his love.